All right, all right, all right. You guys know it's serious when I bring the microphone out in nature. How's it going, everybody? My name is Tommy. I am by a beautiful lake in Colorado today. It is mid-October, and it's about 85 degrees, which is beautiful yet terrifying. So we are scared of how warm it is right now, but I am also taking advantage of the water that I'm still able to swim in and take a speedo dip in. Today I'm going to be talking about my YouTube journey. I have not really spoken about my YouTube journey before. I started making videos about a year ago at this point. I believe my first video was early September of 2023 and that was my coming out story. I want to talk about my five biggest takeaways from being on YouTube for the last year and also being able to gain 100,000 followers or subscribers in the span of a year because I hit the 100k mark by the end of September of this year. I wanted to thank you guys for allowing me to reach that milestone and giving me the desire to want to make more videos because at the end of the day, I love making videos, I love making short films, I like being a positive voice for the gay community especially. I would feel very guilty if I did not use my platform to help other gay men who went through the same struggles that I did and are going through similar experiences in their gay lives. I am not Gay Gandhi, I think I've said that before. I am not an expert on anything gay. I like to use my voice, and I like to share my stories, and I like to create discussions with my videos. Alright, before I start with my five takeaways, I want to say that YouTube is not for everybody. Having a social platform is not for everybody. Making videos is not for everybody. But I want everybody that's watching this video to apply being on YouTube to another aspect of their life. I like to say that being on YouTube is just putting yourself out there and putting yourself out there can mean many different things in many different lives. So let's say you wanna start putting yourself out there at work, becoming more successful. Let's say you want to start putting yourself out there to become more fit, to become more healthy, just making yourself more vulnerable. Just think of situations in your life in which you have to do that in order to become more successful and apply my tips to that part of your life. Obviously, not everybody wants to start a YouTube channel and I don't blame you because YouTube can be a bitch sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's very rewarding because you can share your stories with thousands and thousands of people, sometimes millions. My takeaway number five is you are going to get negative comments from people no matter what, especially the more successful that you become, the more vulnerable you make yourself. There are always going to be people that don't like what you're doing, that write negative things about you, say negative things about you. But I found that at the end of the day, these people are 99% of the time just jealous of what you have jealous of your platform, even if they disagree with your opinions, there is really no reason to attack somebody's character online unless you are really uncomfortable with yourself. I used to engage with negative comments on YouTube back in the day. I think my first controversial video, let's say, was the worst part about being gay, and I think I've removed that video since because it makes me cringe, but I got a lot of negative comments and people were attacking my character. <laughs> And I remember I didn't make a video for a couple of weeks after that because I just could not handle the negative reactions. Take negative comments with a grain of salt because most likely these people are jealous and the more successful you become, the more exposed you make yourself. You are gonna get people that are hating on your stuff. My takeaway number four from being on YouTube for a year and somehow gaining 100,000 subscribers you don't have to stick to your original plan if it does not work. And this can be applied to any part of life, like I said earlier. My original plan starting YouTube was actually to do 
bodybuilding and strictly workout videos. I still do some workout videos once in a while, but I remember when I started my YouTube channel, the primary focus was going to be me doing workout videos and giving health tips, which I still love to do every once in a while, like I said, but there was no desire to talk about being gay or gay topics, gay issues, because at the point of me starting my YouTube channel, I was very self-conscious and I was, to be honest, embarrassed to talk about gay topics online, knowing that my family and friends would see those videos. As time went on and as I got more comfortable sharing my stories and being more vulnerable online, I realized that I am really passionate about gay issues and helping people go through some of the things that I have experienced, like coming out or finding gay friends or wearing Speedos, as you see in this video. So just because you start something does not mean that you can't change your destination along the way. So let's say in life you you want to be a movie star. So you start out being a movie star and then you realize that you're really into directing and you want to become a director. You are able to put the puzzle pieces together and change routes along the way. Don't feel like you have to stick with one thing forever and ever because life is all about experiences and being able to make your own decisions and switching up things when they don't feel right. If you have no idea what you want to do on YouTube or anything in life, just try a bunch of different things and see what sticks, see what you're passionate about, and see what other people respond to. Takeaway number three from being on YouTube for a year, being consistent is very important. I have learned that uploading once a week is best for me, and I usually upload on Thursday or Friday of every week. When I first started, I was uploading videos maybe once every 10 days. Sometimes I do two videos in a row, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. It was so chaotic. And I've learned that being consistent with your YouTube videos is important and your subscribers are counting on you to release a video on a certain day at a certain time, whatever it may be. And that can translate to life because it's important to be consistent and not give up. You can't say you've tried something fully after one time. You have to stay consistent with it. And I think in order to reap the benefits of anything, you have to stay consistent with it. For example, if you are wanting to get super fit in the gym, you can't go to the gym once every 15 days. You have to be consistent with going to the gym. Set a schedule for yourself. I think setting a schedule for yourself in any aspect of life is very important because you can hold yourself accountable and remind yourself that you have to do something at a certain time. My takeaway number two from being on YouTube for a year is that being humbled is okay sometimes. Many times in my videos, I have said something that I now regret or I said something that is non-factual, but I claimed it was factual. And these are things that usually revolve around the gay community. I have made some claims about gay people, certain aspects of the gay community, um, gay party culture, all that stuff. And I realized that I spoke too soon or I spoke out of place. Being able to read comments from people who have a different perspective and prove me wrong in some instances has been very humbling. On the flip side, being on YouTube has also been great for my confidence. I feel like I am very open about talking about my personal life and my sex life, my uh, past, my future, my gay experiences, my gay stories, relationships, all that stuff. So YouTube definitely has made me more confident in that aspect of my life, but it's also been very humbling because you put up a video and there are hundreds of thousands of people that critique what you're doing and 
you have to be able to either drown out that noise or take constructive criticism. All right, my takeaway number one, being on YouTube for an entire year and gaining 100,000 subscribers. Make videos that you are passionate about and actually care about. I have been on a roller coaster the past year of highs and lows when it comes to YouTube and feeling like I have to make a video that's going to go viral and then the next week I want to make a video that I know won't go viral but it's very personal to me. Oh, A lot of my most personal videos that I never thought would go viral actually ended up going viral and a lot of the viral videos so like trendy type videos are some of my least popular videos. Once you start copying other people or trying to follow a trend that you're not passionate about, that you really don't care for, making something like a YouTube video, it's going to lose its color because I can say from experience that I got really bored with my YouTube channel when I started making videos. For example, I think I had a video like use your gaydar, like how to tell if a man is gay. Like, yeah, that's a funny video, whatever. But I was just trying to be too funny and trendy and relatable and try and go viral. But at the end of the day, I love making videos in nature. I like a lot of ambient noises. I like making my videos a lot more movie-like and film-like instead of just sitting in front of a camera like I'm doing now, but I used to just sit inside of my room and film, which is totally fine. If you're, if you're into sitting at a desk and filming yourself, that's totally fine, but I have found that being in nature and filming and speaking about issues that I actually care about, that has been a lot more rewarding for me. That can translate to life in a way that leads you to follow your passions instead of doing what you think you should do or doing what other people think you should do. Even if it's more difficult at the beginning to stick with your passions, it pays off in the long run because every time you do a job or make a video or go to a workout class, whatever, you are a lot more energized, you have a lot more passion about what you're doing instead of, say, making something or doing something that other people want you to do or doing something that you think is going to make more money or make you more successful. Just follow what you love. Talk about what you love because you are what you do. Think about what you're passionate about and do that. It doesn't have to be making videos. It can be painting. It can be bike riding. It can be eating hot dogs. I don't know. But... Just do what you're passionate about and stick with that. All right, so my five takeaways from being on YouTube for the last year and gaining 100,000 subscribers. Five, negative people are inevitable, especially if you do put yourself out there, become popular, successful, make yourself more vulnerable. People are always going to hate. So you have to make sure that you drown out those people, push them aside, because they want you to engage with them. They are trolls, essentially. So the more you focus on the positive instead of the negative, the faster you are going to grow as a person in whatever aspect of life you're focusing on. My takeaway number four from being on YouTube for an entire year, it is okay to start somewhere and then completely switch what you're going to do. I wanted to originally start making strictly workout videos and now look at me, I am making speedo videos and a lot of gay content. Number three, consistency is key. In any aspect of life, it's good to create a schedule and hold yourself accountable. I think I used the example of working out. Um, it's not going to be beneficial if you just work out whenever you feel like it. You have to set a schedule for yourself and set goals. In order to reach those goals, you have to create your own timeline and hold yourself accountable. Not just on YouTube, that is something that is important for everyday life. All right, my takeaway number two from being on YouTube for an entire year. I thought I was gonna become incredibly confident and cocky after getting 100,000 subscribers, but I have become really humbled because 
I have been proven wrong in a lot of instances, especially in my earlier videos. I have said some things that I know were taken out of context, but were not said correctly or appropriately. My takeaway number one from being on YouTube for an entire year, follow your passions. Don't think that you are going to excel in life if you are just doing what everybody else is doing or everybody else wants you to do. There's nothing more fulfilling than creating something of your own, having something of your own, whether that's your own YouTube channel or having your own personal passion, um, whether that's hiking or biking or like I said, eating hot dogs, whatever it may be, just focus on what you're passionate about because I promise that will be rewarding. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Speedo content. I was not planning on shooting any Speedo content for this video. I was just gonna sit here and speak to you guys, but my entire channel has been me in Speedo. So if I'm going to be talking about my YouTube experience, then why not have some Speedo content in there? Thank you guys so much for the support. I would not be anywhere close to where I am without you guys, the people that watch my videos. I will see you in the next video. Bye.